Lady Mary. <laughs> so we're just, it must be a Scottish It must thing. be. <laughs> 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 so yeah, I'm Danielle, um, I'm 27, I'm mum of three children, um, and I'm from Edinburgh. And this is me, one year ago. I had my surgery on June the 5th last year. Um, I flew on Monday the 4th and had the surgery June the 5th. Um, and I was home by Friday to my kids and my husband. So my high weight, highest weight was 17 stone 5 at 5 foot 1, BMI of 47, on the maximum dose of antidepressants that you could have. I was absolutely miserable. I couldn't get off my couch without two pens. Um, I used to joke to my husband that he was going to need a hoist if I got any heavier. Um, and I was absolutely miserable. I, I wouldn't leave the house. I wouldn't do anything. And the only person that ultimately, ultimately suffered the fact with me was my children. Um, my children had a mother who was miserable. So after looking around on Facebook, I spoke to Mary, um, <laughs> Sammy. I talk um, too much. Everyone was there. She's on Facebook too much. <laughs> <laughs> I decided to schedule a wee phone call with Dr. Tamar and because I'm a skinny Scottish person I booked a year in advance for time to save um, and I had family saying oh my goodness don't go to Egypt you're going by yourself I mean I could go by myself I was desperate and um, I joked to Sammy that I would have let Dr. Tamar operate on me on the beach I was so desperate to go um, you know um, and I got there, landed in Egypt, and there was a, a driver who came to collect me. He didn't, he didn't speak English. That doesn't matter. Like, I, I don't speak Arabic. Um, and I was thinking, oh my goodness, what have I done? What have I done? And I was just saying to somebody up the back, we were on the road going to Alexandria, and the driver turned around and he went, I'm very sorry. And he pulled in somewhere, and it was a petrol station. I was like, why is this man saying sorry to me? What's he going to do to me? <laughs> and he was actually only just getting petrol. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, um, that was a bit of a funny one. So we got to the hospital, and somebody came down, spoke perfect English. Um, if that's a worry of anybody's, if the language barrier, you don't need to be worried about that. The nurses, although they don't speak much to English, they seem to know what you need before you do. Um, that is not an issue. They are extremely well trained. Um, I had a housekeeper coming in, cuddling me because I was crying one day um, for no reason. I'm just a hormonal woman. Um, she was coming, she was stroking my hair and I thought, do you know what? And I'm not comparing the NHS to private healthcare here. I would never have got that in a hospital back home. Never um, at all, they do their job and that's it. I'm, I'm so thankful that we have the NHS, thank God, but I would never have got that um, back home. Um, so then they came for surgery after all my testing, ultrasounds, all very, very thorough. Um, I was like, for goodness sake, more blood, like what, how much more do you want? It was, it was all very seamless and thorough. The room was absolutely spotless and clean. Um, housekeepers were in four or five times a day um, and things like that. So we got my surgery done, came round, um, a bit of discomfort. I, I I've never had surgery before, I had no surgery injection, no surgery at all. Um, a bit of discomfort, obviously I'm not used to surgical procedures or anything, but within 48 hours I was done, I was ready to go home, went on a full <coughs> ride. Um, with went on a tour with a tour guide who showed me around these in Alexandria and we actually met at night for a green tea <laughs> um, which was nice and then by the next day to Friday I was, I was off, I was home um, back to my husband, my husband is self-employed um, and I have three small children and I stayed at home at the time and he was back to work by the Monday um, and I was left at home with three children under five um, so that, that is how quick you do recover it. That, this is no joke. Like I was quite shocked. I was like, I'm going to need to. He's going to need to stay at home for a few weeks. But no, nothing. Um, yeah, back home. Um, and I felt fine when I got home. It, people say, Oh, how do you adjust? How do you adjust not eating? Food was before surgery. Food was everything for me. 
I turned to food when I was sad, when I was miserable, when I was happy, to celebrate. I turned to it for everything. I would start my diet every Monday, and by the Monday at 5 p.m., I was phoning Domino's to celebrate that success for six hours before. Um, but like, you do, you just cope with a new normal, and I would take how I feel now, over and over and over again, for smaller portions any day. Um, absolutely any day. Um, I'm now off all antidepressants, um, no counselling, it was something I suffered with for eight years nearly since my son was born. Um, I was suicidal at one point um, and nearly was admitted to hospital. Um, I've not been on antidepressants now in almost eight or nine months. Um, I'm not saying that's going to be the case for everybody if that's your situation, but it's for mine. Um, my BMI is normal. Um, I've went from a size 24, almost a 26, depending on where you shop, to a size 6 to an 8. Sometimes a 4, if it's in Primark. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm just so grateful. Um, my children have their mother back. They, I can get up off a couch, can run about with them and not feel like I'm going to go into heart failure or cardiac arrest. I can, I can do all these things now. I've went back to studying, I've got a new job, I'm working full time. And I'm honestly, Dr. Tamar, I'm just so grateful. I don't even know what else I can really say. But thank you so much. Thank you.